Take a trip to Denver these days and this is what you're going to see. Homeless people laying across the sidewalk in the middle of the day. This was on the extreme far west side of Denver near the intersection of Sheridan and West Colfax. Go any further west and you would be in the suburb of Lakewood. Unfortunately, homelessness in Denver can be seen throughout the entire city. Actually, what I meant to say was the entire metro area because you can see it scattered throughout the suburbs as well. And when it comes to the suburbs, Aurora sees one of the higher homeless populations out of all of the suburban cities. But anyway, we're going to mainly focus on the city of Denver for this video as that's where the problem is at its worst. I drove throughout the entire city in July of 2022, and I've been back several times since then. Throughout the times that I've been here, the biggest thing that I noticed was that these tent cities will often move around. The reason why that happens is because residents and businesses will make a complaint to the city, and then the city will come in and clear out the homeless camp, only for the homeless camps to relocate and have another group of residents and businesses make the same complaint. Basically, it's like going in circles on a merry-go-round and the problem never gets solved. For example, the first time that I visited, I remembered seeing a massive tent city near the South Platte River northeast of downtown in the Five Points neighborhood. And I went back to that very same spot in August, so only one month later, and it was all cleared out. So like, you would have had no idea that there was a tent city there just a month prior, even though the homeless population for the city was still the same. With that said, the areas of town that I saw a good amount of homeless people was pretty consistent throughout the four times that I visited the Mile High City. Each time I would see homelessness in four specific areas those being in and around downtown, in the areas just east of Broadway between Colfax and the railroad tracks, anywhere along Colfax as it heads through downtown, or anywhere else throughout the city following either I-25 or I-70. As we all know, that highways provide sort of a barrier wall, and there's a lot of large patches of grass in between highways and rows of retail or industrial buildings that make for ideal spots for a tent city, not to mention overpasses. You know what's crazy in between all of this is that the Denver region has been seeing a record-breaking amount of tourists since 2020. In 2022, Denver saw 36.3 million visitors, which was a 15% increase over the previous year. The tourists couldn't be less interested in the city, however. Really, they just fly into the third busiest airport in the nation and head west on I-70 until they get into the mountains. Or maybe they're just heading up Highway 36 to Boulder to watch Coach Prime in Colorado football. But despite the massive increase in tourists, Denver has actually been losing population since 2020. And while the metro area overall continues to grow, the population growth has slowed down drastically since being one of the most popular areas to relocate to for Americans during the previous decade. Basically, once the pandemic happened, everything changed here for the worse. As you saw in the opening clip, homeless will pretty much go anywhere they please these days in the city of Denver. It's sad that there's so many of them, to be honest. According to the Denver Gazette, there's as many as 9,065 homeless people in the Denver metro area as of January 2023. That number was up from 6,800 the year before, which is an increase of 30%. So it's only getting worse, and it's getting worse fast. If that data is accurate, that's an increase in slightly over 2,000 homeless people over the course of just one year. Now, as I mentioned earlier, most of the homelessness in the Denver metro area can be found in the city limits of Denver. And this map here illustrates that. Even though you can see there's still a couple thousand spread throughout the Denver metro area outside of the city limits. It looks like Douglas County to the south is an exception. However, some other data to point out is that Boulder County saw an 84% increase in homelessness over the last year. Now granted, 800 is a small number, so percentages are going to exaggerate that a little bit, but it's still an increase and a concerning increase. And it's safe to say that not only the Denver area, but the state of Colorado has a pretty big homeless problem, and it's growing to be out of control. Anyway, the city of Denver as of January 2023 had a population of 5,800 homeless. Just to show how high that number is, I'll compare Denver to some larger cities in California that have become known for their large homeless population. San Francisco, for example, had 7,700, and the city across the bay, Oakland, 
had somewhere between five and 6,000. And you might be seeing more buildings like this throughout the city if Denver can't solve this issue soon. Well, now time for some more data, as according to this table here, the Denver metro area has the 10th highest rate of homelessness per 100,000 people. One thing that all of the cities in the top 10 have in common is the high price of rent. While rent in Denver doesn't come close to what we see in some of the cities in California, it's still incredibly expensive. Experts say that the wage needed to rent an average two-bedroom apartment in Denver is $32 an hour. With that said, the average renter in the region makes about $26 an hour. I hope that's not what I think it is, sitting right outside of the Elway, or Elways, I should say. I can't imagine that the town hero in John Elway is too thrilled about that. Well, the overall view of the homeless issue in Colorado is polarizing. Some experts will tell you that a good portion of the homeless people in the Mile High City are victims, and some of the people who live here feel the same way. They'll say that most of them have recently had a Colorado address, and they work as they've simply been priced out of their homes and can't afford rent anywhere. They'll say that the overall view of the homeless population is negative, and it's a little bit exaggerated. Others don't believe that the negative stereotype given to homeless people in the city is exaggerated. They believe that it's their fault that they're homeless. They'll say that they did this to themselves, whether it's through abusing drugs or looking for handouts. They'll say that the work is there for those who seek it, and that there's plenty of companies around who are looking for workers. So yes, there is some real moral and political tension between the residents and the government. People don't always agree on how to solve the problem, and people don't agree on how the problem came to be. Therefore, there's a lot of butting heads. Now, regardless of opinions, when it comes down to it, pretty much everyone agrees, regardless on the level of sympathy that one has for the homeless, that they don't want a homeless camp in their own neighborhood, as it drags down property values and homeowners get fearful of being the victim of a crime. Same thing for business owners, as if you own a business, especially one reliant on foot traffic like a restaurant or some sort of retail, and if there's a homeless camp in front of the entrance to your business, chances are that you're going to have fewer customers. Much fewer customers. And we'll talk more about that shortly. In all honesty, it's almost impossible to find a quick solution to such a complex problem. Denver's new mayor, Mike Johnston, sent out an emergency declaration to tackle the homeless issue back in August of this year. Now, by law, an emergency declaration can only last for seven days in the state of Colorado, but it was able to be extended through mid-September as the issue here is so bad. Declaring an emergency allows local and state government officials to gather up funds and other resources to try to solve this issue. It basically puts all of the effort from the state and the city into tackling this issue in particular. There's another group called the Denver Basic Income Project that's a nonprofit, which is basically giving monthly cash deposits to as many as 800 homeless people in the Mile High City in an effort to minimize the problem. There's also no conditions on how the homeless people spend the money that they are being given, so who knows how effective that program is, despite the good intentions. Hopefully it is being effective, because I truly hope that this problem can be fixed. Now another problem that homeless camps bring to the city is the effect on the economy. Multiple businesses throughout downtown Denver have reported a decrease in sales due to the homeless camps that sit along their street. A headline from Denver 7 reports that multiple establishments, including the Triangle Bar, the British Bulldog, which has been in operation since 1904, and a place called Cheese Meat Board, reported a massive decline in business due to the homeless encampments near Broadway and 20th. And with that said, I remember seeing a lot of homeless in that area, both in 2022 and in 2023 when I visited town. In fact, this drone shot here is at Curtis and 21st, which is basically one block away from Broadway and 20th. Anyway, these business owners say that if things don't improve, that they'll have no choice but to close up shop. One of the owners told Denver 7 that the street corner right outside of his business smells like urine every morning. 
He went on to speak for other businesses on the block by saying that they all feel like they're under siege, as you can never predict what the mental state will be of some of the homeless people on a day-to-day basis. One day they might keep to themselves, whereas another day they might want to either vandalize or harass people. There's also a lot of trash that comes with the homeless encampments that just ends up laying around the sidewalks and the streets, or to put it differently, along the entrances to these establishments. There's a lot of drug usage too, as a large percentage of the people in these homeless camps shoot up heroin or abuse some other kind of drug on a regular basis. Another issue that these restaurant owners have mentioned is that they'll try to hire new employees, but they'll show up and deny the offer after the interview due to not feeling safe working at these places with the amount of homeless around. With that said, if Denver is unable to solve this issue soon, then the Mile High City could start looking like the Motor City really quick, as business owners eventually will just be fed up with the problem and they'll just close and move to the suburbs, and residents will do the same, just like with what happened with Detroit. Will all major U.S. cities soon look like Detroit? It certainly seems like it sometimes. Well, for now, much of Denver, Colorado has really nice looking neighborhoods. Hopefully it can stay that way. And upcoming, I have 28 videos where I go through the entire city of Denver, showcasing every neighborhood inside of the city. I'll explain not only what these neighborhoods are like to live in, but also the history and economic makeup of the city as well. So make sure to stay tuned for all of that. With that said, I do end the video here. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. That way, you can be notified every time that I upload a new video within the Denver series. Also make sure to hit that like button as well, as doing that helps destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!